Hello, hello. Hey guys. Thank you guys for watching. How's the volume sound? Hey, from Vermont. I'm from Vermont. I need some feedback, guys. How's the volume sound on your end? Sound good? Streaming okay? All right. So we're gonna hang out for a couple minutes. Let some people get on here. This is what we're gonna be tying up tonight. It's a heavy wire caddis. It's a twisted wire pattern. Looks complex, but it's actually very, very simple. Good. So we'll just hang out, I guess. If anybody has any questions in the meantime, I'm going to let some people get on, so fire away if you got any. And uh, for those that are watching, don't forget to share the uh, share this stream and like the Norvice page. Tim's giving away some Norvice t-shirts, and you can win just by sharing, so make sure you guys do that. Uh, where in Vermont? Uh, Colchester, Vermont. Where in Vermont are you from? Hey, Australia. What's happening? Must be pretty late there. Or early. Not sure. <laughs> Frank, what are we doing? We are just waiting to get some people on here before we begin. But we're going to be tying up some of these twisted wire caddis. Heinsberg, nice. Send me a message. Let's fish sometime. All right, what time do we got? Wait a couple more minutes here. Let some people get on. Tennessee, hello. Pennsylvania, hello. Nine AM in Melbourne. Up and early. I actually have some stickers going out to New Zealand. Hey, Scotland. And uh, sorry you guys can't see me, you know, the limited space here at my desk doesn't really allow for a camera to be facing the other way, so the good thing is you guys get a nice up-close view, kind of uh, my point of view, of the fly being tied. Besides, I'm sure you guys aren't here to see me, you're here to see the fly, so... Alright, we're going to wait one more minute, and then... Uh, We'll get her going here. But, so ultimately, you know, a lot of guys are doing these weave patterns, and they're very complex. But all I'm doing is taking three strands of wire and using the vise to twist it up to make a single strand. And once you wrap it around the shank, it kind of gives the impression of a weaved pattern without the time and the complexity of actually doing a weave pattern. So what we're going to do, I use the, uh, we're going to be using this hook here. It's a fire hole 315, size 12. I uh, really like this hook. It's a good all-around hook for a lot of different nymph patterns. Give it some, some natural shape. Alright, so get your hook in the vise. Now the lead is optional. I know some guys are lead free to each their own. I like to weight mine down because I use this fly as an anchor fly. So I like it nice and heavy. So I got a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead in black nickel. And we're going to add 
think six or seven wraps here will fit inside the bead. That way we're not taking up real estate on the shank. Get the lead in there nice and tucked away. Kind of holds the bead in place at the same time, which is nice. So I'm gonna start, lay down some thread wraps. I like nice touching even wraps here because we want this wire to lay nice and flat so we get a nice uniform body. So every few wraps, I'll stop, give it a counterclockwise twist because I want to make sure the wire or the thread stays nice and flat. So I'll snip that off. at the end of our wire rope here try to find a nice spot without any imperfections so what I try to do zoom in a little bit so you guys can see I try to be really careful to follow the shank with the wire this way you get the most uniform body possible just take your time, nice, slow. Like I said, every few wraps, I'll stop, give it a counterclockwise twist, just to make sure our wires, or our thread is nice and flat. So, wire's a little long, trim that. Those are junk scissors, so I'm not worried about dulling them. <laughs> Keep it going nice and smooth. Follow the shape of the hook. A twist here. You guys still see this okay? I got some guys saying they lost the feed. Can everybody see okay still? Hear okay? Anybody? All right, well, we'll keep going. Hopefully somebody will give me some feedback here. So I always work my way back down because we want to get it nice and smooth to lay down these wire wraps here. All right, so I got people telling me the feed's okay, so that's good. So we're gonna go back up the shank. Give it a quick whip finish and then we're going to bring our wire over to the thread post so we can wrap this around the body so the big thing is here it's hard to explain i i don't just twist the wire because you want it to kind of lay natural because of the three wires that are twisted into it so i just kind of like push it straight forward and pull it straight back make sure your wraps are touching this way the wire can kind of lay as it wishes to lay rather than twisting it by normally wrapping it. So like I said, it's, uh, it's a really easy pattern. You know, once you have your wire twisted up, and I'll show you guys how to do that after this fly. So just wrap it all the way up. And this adds a lot of extra weight to the fly too. being a solid wire body like this. So I do a few wraps behind, a few wraps in front, make sure we secure that wire really good. And you can helicopter it off just like normal. Simple and easy. So for the dubbing, I'm a real big fan of the split thread technique. I do that for almost every fly that has dubbing on it. I just feel it's more secure. You know, we want these flies to last more than a couple of fish. So for dubbing, we're going to be using black laser dub. Split the thread, some dubbing in there. Just give it a twist. Help 
twist it up, make it nice and secure. Get that nice wrap. Simple and easy. Give it a nice four or five turn whip finish. I actually like to double up my whip finish just to make sure it's nice and secure. Again, we want these flies to last. And there you go. So for thread, what I'm using is UTC 140. It's black. I pretty much use 140 for almost everything. I mean, if I'm tying streamers, I'll use 220 or something. But I pretty much use 140, even on my midges. I have a tendency to have a heavy hand. So when I use anything less than 140, I tend to break thread. So, so I'm going to show you guys how to make the twisted wire here. And then we'll tie some more flies. So what I got is I use three different colors, ultra wire. I use the brassy size because anything smaller is easy to break once you twist it. I don't know if you guys can see these. So we're going to use olive, chartreuse, and green. So the big thing here is you really don't want any imperfections in the wire. Because then once you twist them to the, together, you're going to have kinks in your, you know, final strand. So what I like to do is I'll take my fingernail, press it into my finger really hard, and just run the length of the wire. It helps smooth out any imperfections you have in there. Let me zoom out so you guys can see a little better. So we're going to take our three strands. If I can get a hold of the ends here. Strand, we'll smooth this guy out. Oh, all right, this one's got some snags, so let's get a new piece going here. So, like I said, I run the length for length, I go from the jaws to the post of the Norvice. That's enough, you know, that'll give you enough to do three, four flies at least because we use the post for support. So, we want to make sure it goes at least that far. So, smooth out that piece. And we'll snip that off. All right, so now we'll take our three strands. And the key here when you put them in the jaws is you don't want to clamp it too tight because I find if you clamp it too tight, what happens is once you start twisting, it breaks right at the jaw. So put it in there and I put it right at the top. That way you get closest to the center point you know for the rotation so clamp it in there just enough to hold but like I said you, you don't want to clamp too hard and the other thing is make sure your three strands run straight to the post don't you don't want any twists you want them running all parallel so you run to the post unlock your jaw here and just start spinning and the big thing too is as you spin the wire is going to shorten because it's going to compress so you don't want to hold it at the post too tight. You want to, you know, just enough to keep it steady, but you don't want to restrict it from shortening. So now you got a nice twist. That's our rope. Easy as that. So as you guys can see, you know, this is what we got. We got a few imperfections here, but we can work with it. So just remember again, guys, share this live feed. You get a chance to win a Norvice t-shirt. Make sure you like the Norvice page to enter. All right. Let's... Sorry, my bobbin came unspooled here on me while I was talking. Let me just get re-threaded really quick. See any new questions? Everybody still see everything okay? All right. So 
Let's take our hook. Again, I got a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead on a fire hole 315 size 12 hook. Put that in the vise. And zoom in so you guys can see everything all right. So again, I take 0.15 lead wire, give it about six or seven wraps. And I stuff that up into the bead. Helps hold the bead in place. Obviously gives the fly extra weight without taking up any space on the shank. Oh my goodness. Bobbin came unspooled on me again. Alright. Sorry about that guys. Let me get this re-spooled here really quick. Everybody still see everything okay? Hear everything okay? Kind of new at this live video thing. This is the first time I've ever gone live before, so, you know, bear with me here. Alright. Alright. So again, lay down a nice, even thread base. So we want that wire to lay nice and flat and smooth. Alright, take the wire we just made, the twisted wire, got our end cut, nice and clean. Roughly gauge the distance to the bead and lock that in. Now again, go nice and slow and try to make sure that this wire follows the shape of the hook. That way you get the most uniform, smooth body. So I'm not seeing any new comments here. Oh, here we go. Alright, comments weren't updating like they should sorry if i missed any questions guys like i said i'm kind of new at, this is actually the first time i've done any type of live video let alone a live tying video so this is new for me as much as it is for you guys so bring the thread back again just help lock it in and smooth things out here couple whip finishes just to hold it in place and wrap your wire again just kind of push it straight forward and pull it straight back you want to let the wire do its own thing if you hold it too tight while you twist it doesn't seem to want to lay right so just nice and slow Make sure your turns are touching. Now when you're using like a, like a jig hook or a nymph hook, something that's straighter, you can use the vise to turn this. But because of the curve of this hook, I find it's a little easier just to do it manually. But I'll do a couple on some jig hooks here before the end of the video just so you guys can see what that's all about. Alright. Let's lock this in. Well, there goes my heavy hand snapping thread. Just lock this back in. Not gonna lie, a little nervous doing this video. Like I said, this is all new to me, but we're gonna get through it. We'll helicopter that off. Trim any leftovers out. Now 
I'll get some dubbing on there. So again, we're using black laser dub. And we're gonna do the split thread technique. So give your bobbin a counter, counter, counter clockwise twist. Flatten out that thread a little bit. And we're gonna split that. Again, I do this for pretty much all my flies with dubbing. I like this technique. I feel like it traps the dubbing, makes it more secure, makes the fly a little bit more durable. But you can still brush it out and get that nice buggy effect. So I'll just wrap that around. And give it a couple, four or five turn whip finishes. So where do I use this fly? This is, you know, I, in Vermont here where I am, the uh, caddis pattern, you know, does really well for me. This fly in particular is ultra heavy with the tungsten bead, the lead wraps, and the wire body. It gives it a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of weight. So when you're fishing fast water, you know, particularly Euro nymphing or tight, tight line nymphing, it's really good for that pocket water that's moving fast. It gives the fly a chance to drop into those holes before the water pushes it over the top. So we'll do one more with this uh, 315 curved hook, and then we'll do a couple with a, uh, a jig hook, so you guys can see you know, what it looks like on a jig hook here. Uh, what other colors do I use, Brian? Um, any variation is really good. I mean, I like coppers and, and gold too. But this one particularly, just to imitate a caddis, I'm using the three type of or the three different shades of green that I have available at the time. <clears throat> so let's see here. Get a few wraps of lead wire down. Like I said, six or seven wraps would be just enough to fit inside the bead. Break that off. Keeps the bead locked in. Gives it some nice extra weight. Got a thread base laid down. Nice touching wraps. You want the thread to be nice and flat. So if it starts to twist, stop, give it a counterclockwise twist, and keep going. Now again, this just helps with making sure the body is nice and uniform, nice and smooth. Take our wire and we'll trim the end. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Again, just try to gauge a rough estimate of the length up to the bead. And then lock that in. Go real slow. Just try to follow the shank of the hook as close as you can. Obviously you don't have to, but this just, you know, again helps keep everything smooth and uniform. Nice and even. And uh, any unanswered questions, you know, sorry guys, so I'm trying to like tie and watch the screen at the same time. So if I miss any of your questions, I'll go back and answer them after. Plus Tim, you know, he'll help answer questions that I can't get to as well, especially regarding the vice and, and all that, so. I'll bring it back down just to help smooth things out. Lock everything in real secure. Come back up. And I'll give it a couple turn whip finish just to lock it in, hold that in place for us so we can twist our wire. All right, so just remember guys, share this video. You could win a free Norvice t-shirt Every 50 shares are giving one away. It's as easy as that. Just like the page and give it a share. All right. So we'll go nice and slow with our wraps. Just like I said, you just push it forward and pull it back. You don't want to hold it tight and twist it around. 
because then the wire it doesn't lay as natural as it could so just kind of let it do what it wants to do nice even touching wraps and you know it's kind of weird I, I still haven't figured out the science behind it but every time I tie this fly the pattern it lays different sometimes it'll lay in a perfect spiral and make kind of like a barbershop sign out front how it twists it'll kind of give that twisted effect and then other times the colors in the pattern just go wherever they want to go I can't figure out if it's the direction of the wire I'm not sure but like this one you can I don't know if you guys can see I'll try to zoom in you can kind of see how the dark green stayed running up the side and on this side as well but other times it'll give like a like a twisted effect around the fly it's still figuring it out but so far it works well caught a lot of fish on this fly so helicopter that off a couple wraps just to lock it in and we get some dubbing here on the collar again for those just joining uh, we started at seven we're going till eight tying this twisted wire caddis just got our wire body laid down doing a collar now we got some black laser dub for the collar and like before we're going to do the split thread technique here just to help secure our dubbing I mean, honestly, dubbing loops I use for, you know, heavier, heavier flies like streamers. Ones that are going to take a lot of abuse, but for little nymphs and stuff, I, I've never had a problem with the split thread technique breaking on me or coming apart. It seems to be, you know, very strong, very reliable. So I've been doing this technique pretty much right from the get-go. Hasn't failed me yet. We've, uh four or five turn whip finish here come behind it with another one just to make sure it doesn't come apart on us and then sometimes what I'll even do is I'll take some UV resin put it on the thread whip finish and then cure it after just to make it extra sturdy but I've never really had a problem with these coming apart so let's do a couple jig jig hooks just so you guys can see some some variation here so for this I'm going to use these new fire hole the 551's it's the wide gap version of their jig hook really good hook I use them for pretty much all the flies I sell or all the jig flies I sell I mean I use fire hole for pretty much everything but um, lately I have been really impressed with uh, BWO Blue Wing Olive, um, they have these new competition hooks which are really, really impressing me. Really strong, and the price point is pretty much unbeatable at this point, unless you get cheap, cheap junk. But so we got the jig hook in, same thing. Gonna stick with the the lead wire, the .15. Uh, Daniel, what type of fish am I catching on this on? Yes, trout. Um, I'm pretty much a trout only guy. Um, we just had a baby, so once in a while we'll go out and just, you know, take Junior out and we'll cast the, the spin rod or I'll put some woolly buggers on my seven weight and we'll, we'll cast for his bass. But 99.9% .9 of the time I am fishing trout. Right now here in Vermont, uh, we're kind of in like a little bit of a drought. Like today was 94 degrees. All the big rivers are low and warm, so pretty much got to go high into the mountains, find those brook trout streams, or we do have a couple spring-fed rivers here, or bottom-release dam-fed rivers that stay cold all year, but it's pretty slim pickings right now for trout, so it's a good time to get caught up on orders. Alright, so take our wire. Again, we'll trim the end off here. We want a nice, clean tip to start with. Do I ever let, add legs to the pattern? I haven't yet. Uh, it's actually a relatively new pattern for me. 
Um, I tied them for my own box. They seem to work really well. I haven't started selling them yet, but it's a, it's been a really productive pattern, so I'll probably start playing with some variation, but for now I have not really varied from what you're seeing me tie here. So again, we'll just give it a whip finish to lock that in. And now that we're using a, a straight shank hook, we can actually use the vise to twist this wire into place, which makes life a little bit easier, makes things a little bit faster. I'm just kind of pulling back on the wire towards the back of the fly to help make sure these wraps stay touching. All right, my Norvice bobbin came on spooled on me, and I didn't want to make you guys wait to spool it again, so I'm using my balloon bobbin here. So I'll helicopter that off. Not quite as pretty as the curved hook, but I don't think the fish really care about that. Start fishing for smallmouth. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have some... You know, Lake Champlain here in Vermont is actually one of the largest freshwater fisheries in the country, definitely in the Northeast. But so it's definitely available to me. I just I spend enough money on trout stuff. Uh, <laughs> I can't really afford to start dipping into another species right now. I only have one seven weight rod. Most of my other rods are three and four weight just for nymphing and small stream trout, stuff like that. So we're going to do a split thread here again. I kind of busted my thread a little, so we'll just be a little, a little gentle with it. So give that a nice twist, help lock it into the thread. Wrap it around. Easy peasy. And you can brush this out too. You know, if you guys take your dubbing brush, you can brush this out, make it a little bit buggier looking. I find after a couple fish anyway, it starts to tatter on its own, so I just usually leave it. And there you go, nice wide gap jig version. Uh, how many wires, Andy? I use three wires, and I'm, I'm actually gonna make another one here in a second because you run out pretty fast. Like I said, when you go from vice to post, you get about four or five flies out of that length of wire. And then you gotta twist up some more, so. Let's get our wire out and twist up some more. So we're gonna go with ultra wire, brassy size. We're using olive, green, and chartreuse, if I can find it, and chartreuse. So these are the three colors we're using. Now basically, you're just going to take a length from your vise to your post, give or take. You know, you can always trim the extra off after, but if you're worried about waste, then measure carefully. For the sake of the video, I'm not going to worry about waste right now. I just want to do it fast so you guys don't have to wait. All right. Take our green, place to post. Trim that off. And thirdly, our olive. Again, from the jaws of the vise to the post, I mean, you want a little bit longer so you have enough, you know, to hang on to, but you don't want it too long so you're wasting a bunch of wire. Stuff is not free. All right, so again, what you want to do is just take take each strand, put your thumb into your forefinger or your index finger, and just run down the length of the wire. You want to try to smooth out any imperfections in the wire. That way, when you twist them together, you get a nice, smooth, uniform twist without any kinks and funky spots. So again, just run down the length of the wire, smooth it out, and the same with the last strand. Grab it with your finger 
and just smooth it out. So now you take your three strands, and this part's key. You don't want to clamp it in the vise too hard. I've noticed if you clamp it too hard, once you start twisting the wires together, it'll break off right at the jaws. Cut your ends even. And I, again, I, I put them in the top of the vise or top of the jaws. That way it's closest to that, you know, center point. Lock that in. And you want to make sure these run nice and parallel too. You don't want these twisting. So if you got to, you know, take a second and separate them, do it. Make sure they get all the way. Let me zoom out so you guys can see a little better. You want it to run nice and parallel all the way to the post. No twists. Save the twisting for the vise. Alright. So now you got it nice and smooth. Unlock your vise. And just start twisting. And again, as you twist these wires, it's going to try to shorten because you're obviously you're you know, by twisting it's compressing the wire. So hold it, you know, so it's snug, but not so it's so tight that it can't, you know, do what it has to do. And I, I don't have an exact number of turns, just, you know, that's kind of your discretion, as tight or as loose as you want these twists. But usually when I do it, I'll zoom in here, this is kind of what I'm looking for. Nice, uniform little rope. You guys can use whatever colors you want. You know, we're doing a caddis fly, so I used all the different greens that I had just because it seemed appropriate here. So. so let's do another one. We're going to go, same thing, we're going to go with a fire hole 315 again. It's a curved hook. This time we're going to go with a black bead. Same size though. We're going with a 3.8 matte black tungsten bead. Lock that in the vise. Zoom out just a little bit. So again, do 0.15 lead wraps. We'll give it about six or seven turns. It's enough to stuff inside the bead without taking up space on your shank. Holds the bead in place, gives you some nice extra weight. Because again, I, I use this as a, an anchor fly with usually like a small unweighted nymph behind it. Pretty much tight line nymph 90% of the time. Sometimes I use a strike indicator if I'm trying to get long distance on the, on the cast, but pretty much tight line nymph most of the time. And even though this isn't a jig fly, I haven't really had any problems with it hanging up on me. Seems to do pretty well. Uh, how am I securing to the post, Jock? Um, I'm not really securing at all. I just basically hang it over the post and hold it with my right hand while I turn the vise with my left hand. You know, just kind of lightly holding it just to give it support so it doesn't kink while it's twisting. But, you know, you want to hold it light enough so that as the wire compresses, you know, it, it's, a, it's able to do so without being restricted. So let's start another one here. Some nice, smooth wraps. Try to get that wire to follow that hook shank as best as you can. That way we get a nice, smooth, uniform body. How do I rig my second fly? I, I fish barbless, so you know a lot of guys will tie their their you know second fly to the the shank or you know the the curve of the hook. I can't do that because I fish barbless, so I, I'd risk losing it. So I usually just tie a second piece of tippet to the eye of the point fly of my anchor fly, and then I run. It's usually a lighter weight. I typically run 5x tippet to my you know my anchor fly. And then depending on where I'm fishing or the size of the trout in the water I'm fishing, I, I usually go down to a, a smaller tippet for the second fly. But if I'm fishing big trout, I usually just keep it at 5x all the way through. So just give these nice slow wraps. 
Again, you don't want to hold the wire tight and twist, you know, like this. Just kind of push it forward and pull it back. Let the wire do what it wants to do. Trap that in there. Couple wraps behind, couple in front. Want to make sure, because especially you've got three wires here, you want to make sure you lock that in really good. And then helicopter off, just like you would with a single wire. Sometimes you get a little leftover piece here, but break that off. All right. Yeah, I, I also like the curved hook better, Mike. Um, I mean, I do fish a lot of jig flies, especially for my anchor fly, but I like the natural, the more natural look of the, the curved hook. The Firehold 315, which we're using now, and also the, uh, the 317 is a really good all-around nymph hook I use a lot, too. So we're going to go with the split thread technique. Kind of lay that wire flat, find the center, split it open. The nice thing with this, if you overdub, which is very easy to do, being that the dubbing is locked into the thread, you can pull away extra without pulling it all apart, you know, like we did here. I got a little bit more on there than I need, so I'll pull a little extra out, but it stays on the thread. Twist that up. Easy peasy. Four turn whip finish. I always double up my whip finish just to give the fly a little extra durability. I want these guys to last. And that's it. And like I said before too, you know, you can brush these out if you want. Give it a little bit more action. But I find after you catch a fish or two, it kind of does this on its own anyway. So I usually just leave it. All right, let's do another one. Let's see if I'm missing any questions here. Have I tried Semper Thread or Semper Fi Thread? Yes, I have. Um, I usually use UTC though, just because it's cheap and it's readily available, especially in a lot of different colors. Um, if I wanted to spring on some Copic markers, and maybe I might just use white thread all the time, better quality thread. But you know, again, UTC it's pretty much available at most every fly shop in lots of colors, so that's pretty much what I use most of the time. So six or seven lead wraps there, stuff it behind the bead just to help lock it in and. A little imperfection in the hook there. Just to help lock that bead in. Give the fly some extra weight. So nice touching wraps. You want the fly to have a nice even thread base. You know, that way you get a nice smooth uniform body. And uh, don't forget to share this video, guys. Tim's giving away some Norvice t-shirts. Make sure you go on the Facebook page and like it. And uh, for every, I think it's 50 shares, he's giving away a t-shirt. So you guys can win just by clicking a few buttons. So make sure you guys go on and do that. Oh, getting ahead of myself here. All right, so let's get our wire. Cut off a fresh end from where we helicoptered it last time. So try to gauge roughly, you know, just the distance to the bead lock that in and I always I don't know why I choose the side rather than the top but I usually just run the wire along the side of the shank and I try to get it to mimic the shank as best as I can that way it flies nice and smooth got a little extra wire on there just snip that off give your if your wire starts to twist just give it a counterclockwise twist 
Well, that way it'll flatten out for you. You want it nice and smooth. You know, and making sure you get that wire right up to the beads is kind of important. That way it helps with the smooth, uniform body, but also it's that much more weight you're adding to the fly because we use this as a point fly. And there's you know, a lot of different easy caddis patterns using dubbing, but the whole point of this is to be a nice heavy fly. So just take your wire, and again, using touching wraps, just kind of push forward and pull it back. You don't want to like twist the wire around like you typically would. You want to kind of just let the wire do what it wants to do. Because of the twist, it, it lays differently than a single wire would. So pull it back and push it forward. Make sure your wraps are nice and tight. And again, you know, if you're using a straight shank hook, like a nymph hook or a jig hook, you can use the vise to turn these wraps, but I find with the curved hook it just works a little bit better as far as getting the wraps, you know, touching really well. And if you're not that picky, go for it, but you know, I'm, my OCD won't let me have gaps in my wraps, so. Go nice and slow, make sure they're touching. Bring it right up to the bead. Oh, see, there goes my heavy hand again, busting thread. Stand by, folks. Let me re rethread this bobbin. No worries. We'll just capture that in. Pretend like it never happened. Trim that out of there. Like I said, we'll pretend like it never happened. You guys didn't see that, right? Helicopter that off. There you go. Make sure we capture that nice and secure. And we'll get some W on here. Let's, uh, let's do something a little different this time. Let's do uh, some some black ice dub this time. Still keeping with the black dubbing, but just a little bit different. So I'll split this, this thread. And if the thread doesn't want to lay flat for you, just give it a couple counterclockwise counterclockwise twists, and it should flatten out for you, so you can split the thread. Throw this in here. I do taper, Todd, with a lot of my flies. I just find with the with the wire caddis, I like to just do it nice and uniform, just to help make sure everything stays nice and touching and even wraps. Uh, is this my own creation? Yes, Jock. Um, I mean, it's really pretty simple thing I I, don't know, I try to be kind of humble about it. I don't, I don't see it as a big thing but yeah it's uh, you know just looking for a way to do a, a wire weave type body without the work of the wire weave is really what I was going for there you go let's see what time we got 745 so we're getting close to the end here guys just want to remind you again if you're joining in late you can always go back and watch the full video after uh, will be posted up on YouTube and on the Norvice page as well as my own uh, if you guys are interested in any of my flies or anything um, I do have a website it's www.troutsniffer that's trout with a dash between sniffer.com I got flies for sale on there on their hats uh, stickers stuff like that so, let's do one more here. Oops, I grabbed the wrong bead. So we're going to go with another 3.8 uh, countersunk tungsten bead. This one's in matte black. Put 
we're gonna use 0.15 lead wraps sorry for you lead free guys <laughs> don't mean to offend the only reason I honestly don't like the lead free is because the diameter is so much thicker it takes up a lot more real estate on the shank than lead wire does All right, lay down a nice touching thread wrap base. You should get about halfway, stop, give it a counterclockwise spin just to flatten the thread back out, and keep going. Oop. All right. All right, you got your wire. It's going to be messy on the end from the helicopter from the last one, so I'll just trim that off. Start with a fresh end. So I do a couple wraps here, just to lock it in. And give it a counterclockwise spin, make sure your thread's nice and flat. And then just start working your way up the shank. Take your time, make sure that wire follows the shape of the bend, the hook. That way you get the nice smooth body. Uh, Jock, I haven't twisted more than three yet, honestly. I mean, you start to get a lot of bulk when you get up to a lot more wires, but um, I have gone down to small size wire without it breaking, but I'd be really afraid to go to extra small wire. Um, but I bet if you use small wire, you could probably get four or five colors in there and look, probably look pretty cool. Maybe I'll tie one for you tonight. And just again, push forward and pull back on the wire, you know, firm but let the wire twist as it wants to twist. Getting to the end of our wire here. Just enough. couple wraps behind or a couple turns behind a couple turns in front make sure we lock that in really secure helicopter those wires off and you can see here we'll try to zoom in a little bit take the light off it you can see here how it, the darker green kind of gave it a nice like twisting pattern all the way around the fly or sometimes I've seen the darker green run kind of squiggly up the side of the fly. I mean, it's the wire does what it wants to do and it lays how it wants to lay. I mean, I can't really seem to figure out how to make it do what I want it to do, but sometimes it gives a nice spiral pattern, sometimes it's completely random. So, let's split some thread here, get some dubbing on. It's going to be way too much dubbing. That's all right. Oh, let me zoom out for you guys. Twist that up. And that's the nice thing about this split thread technique. You get too much in there, you can just rip out what you don't need without having to redub your whole noodle. Give that a twist. Nice and simple. Again, sometimes I'll put a little UV resin on the thread before I whip finish, and then I'll tie it in and then cure it after the fact just to, you know, secure it. But, you know, with, with double whip finishes, I've never had a problem with it coming apart. All right, well, we got 10 minutes. We got time to do one more. Let's see here. Let's 
do a jig hook for the last one here. The bead's running away from me. Oh. There it is. So use a 3.8 slotted black nickel tungsten bead. I get all my beads from BWOfly.com. Those guys have one of the best bead selections as far as color, size, modeled beads. Um, but their tungsten selection is crazy. And the prices are awesome. The shipping price is awesome. Really fast shipping. I love those guys. And no, they didn't pay me to say that either. So again six wraps or so of 0.15 lead wire stuff that upside the bead helps lock in the bead and gives the fly some extra weight and get some nice touching thread wraps all the way to the back I stop a wrap or two shy just so I can clip my tag and then wrap in my tag not a big deal but just my OCD off this tattered end and the nice thing is with the jig hooks you can actually take the wire and stuff it up inside the bead too which also helps lock it in just keeps it nice and straight with the shank of the hook so that's kind of twisted and give it a little counterclockwise spin flatten that thread out a little bit yeah, the bead info jock is um, bwofly.com. The company is Blue Wing Olive, but the website is bwofly.com. And I get all my tungsten beads from them. And they actually just started coming out with some competition hooks, which have really impressed me. Um, they don't have a ton of styles to choose from yet, but they're working on it. But the ones they do have, like I said, they're really strong. I'm really impressed, especially for the price point they're asking. So it's definitely a good place to get hooks and beads. So I'll just lock that in. A couple wraps in front as well. I want to make sure it's nice and secure. Helicopter that off. A couple more wraps. And now we're ready to dub. <clears throat> and then you know you don't always have to do three different colors either I've played around where I've done two of the same color like two black wires and a gold wire and that has a really good effect as well you know just play around with it I mean you can the you know color combinations are pretty vast so you can do all kinds of different stuff I've actually debated whether I want to try doing two strands of wire and a strand of micro chenille just to see what that looks like, but I have yet to find the time to do it. I'll wrap that up around the collar. A little heavy on the dub on that one, but that's okay. Nice four turn whip finish. I'll give it another one just to make sure it's Locked in, nice, sturdy fly. So yeah, you know, it's uh, it's really simple once you get your wire twisted up, you know. It's a fast, easy pattern to tie. It's heavy, gets down fast. It's a really good anchor fly, especially for the Euro nymphers and tight line nymphers. But, uh, and we actually got, we'll do one more. We got a couple more minutes here, so let's, uh, let's knock out one more. Let's do something a little different here. So I'm going to use a modeled tungsten bead for this one. Same size though, 3.8 millimeter countersunk bead. I don't know if you guys can see that model, but it's one of the beads you can get from BWL Fly. 
I have like four, four or five different color patterns for their modeled selection. Really nice looking beads. So let's see. Five or six wraps with the lead. Just enough to stuff inside the bead. Without taking up space on the shank. Get a nice even thread wrap base. Stop and twist your wire if you have to to flatten it out. I really like that smooth body for this fly. It makes It just looks better. I mean, if you guys don't care if your flies look pretty, then it doesn't matter. Have at it. But if you want to, you know, if you care about how your fly looks, like my OCD, <laughs> then good flat thread base is key. Actually... You know what? We used up the rest of that wire, so let's uh, let me put a whip finish on this guy, and we'll twist up another wire rope really quick here. So let's uh, let's see. Let's go with red and black this time. So we're gonna take. Black ultra wire, brassy size. We're gonna do two strands of black and one strand of red for this one. So, double the length to the post. And again, um, you guys wanna make sure when you're doing this, take your wire and make sure you smooth it out really well. You don't want any kinks or dings in the wire. So just take your fingernail, press it into your finger, run the wire through. Should smooth it out just fine. So we're gonna double up on the black and we're gonna go with red. Brassy size. Just to mix it up a little bit. Show you guys some variation here before we sign off for the night. All right, so get all your tips going here. So again, like I was saying before, for those that are just joining, when you put these wires in your vise, let me zoom in for you, make sure that you don't clamp it too hard. Because if you clamp it too hard, the wires will break right here at the vise when you start twisting. So just lightly clamp it in just enough to hold. And make sure your wires run nice and parallel all the way back to the post. You know, you don't want any twists or kinks, so this helps avoid that. So once you get everything straight to the post, just start twisting. And you want to kind of have a loose hold in your right hand. You know, that way as the wire compresses, it can do what it has to do. You're just kind of holding it firm in place, but, you know, not holding it fixed in place. And that's... Let's see if I can get you guys a better view here. That's what we got. So let's get our fly back in the vise here. And I'll twist this guy up. I'll clip it off so you have a nice fresh tip. Oh, I guess I should probably get some thread going here, huh? Bring our thread to the back. The thread's a little twisted right now, so I'm going to do a couple turns just to lock that in. Give it a counterclockwise twist just to kind of flatten that wire out. 
And uh, it's a couple minutes left here, but the video's still going, so it's not too late to share this and get a chance to win a Norvice t-shirt. Just like the Norvice page and share this feed and you can win. Every 50 shares, Tim's giving one away, so make sure you guys do that. And then again, feel free if you guys are so inclined, check out my website. It's www.trout-sniffer.com. I got some flies, obviously, uh, hats, stickers, stuff like that for sale. And I got a YouTube channel. It's uh, slow going right now. We just had a baby, so I haven't had really a lot of time to sit down and do YouTube videos in between work and the baby and tying flies, but... It's getting there, so if you guys want, go check me out there too. YouTube uh, slash Trout Sniffer. So we're just going to take our wire, just again, nice slow wraps. Push forward, pull back. Don't, don't wrap it around. Kind of let the wire do whatever it wants to do. that in a few wraps in front a few wraps behind and helicopter that off all right let's get some dubbing in there counterclockwise twist just to flatten the thread out that with your tool. Not quite enough here. And I'm using black laser dub again for the collar. I'll just give that a nice twist. And again, sorry if I, if I miss anybody's questions, comments, you know, I'll go back and try to answer them after the fact best I can. Um, Tim from Norvice will also be trying to answer questions as well. And if you guys joined late and you weren't able to see the whole thing, uh, the video will be posted on the Norvice face, uh, Facebook and YouTube as well. So, that uh, thread broke after one wrap. That's all right. I usually do two, but one will be fine. So, there you go. That's the uh, Twisted Wire Caddis. Simple and easy. Gives a nice weave body look without the time and effort of doing an actual weave body. So thank you guys all for joining here. And, uh, you know, this is my first live video ever. So it was kind of a new experience for me. So thank you guys for watching and have a good night.